vengeance. I am the Knight. I am Batman! Kevin Conroy's voice is one we've been hearing for decades. He was the man behind the famous animated Batman. And now that he's gone, watching Batman will never be the same again. He truly was the perfect man for the job, and his success speaks for itself. But besides being Batman behind the scenes, he was a great man who will be missed forever, especially by his closest friends who can't believe he's dead. So what caused his sudden death, and how are his friends remembering him? Continue watching to find out. Kevin Conroy died on November 10th at the age of 66. The world got the news from his representative in DC Comics as well. They wrote, Actor Kevin Conroy, the most beloved voice of Batman in the animated history of the character, died Thursday at age 66 after a short battle with cancer. He was diagnosed with intestinal cancer, but he managed to keep it hidden from the public. That didn't mean that people weren't noticing something was wrong, especially when he started canceling appearances because of circumstances beyond his control, as he put it himself. People had no idea it was this serious though. His last post was a selfie of him on Halloween showing off his fake bat decor. The tweet said, Happy Halloween! The bats are out at Wayne Manor. A photo of Batman with bats being his last post made the whole situation even more heartbreaking. Let's see how he became the voice of Batman and won the hearts of so many people and how heartbroken he left us all. Kevin Conroy was born in Westbury, New York, to an Irish Catholic family. He spent the first 10 years of his life there before moving to Connecticut for the rest of his childhood years. But Kevin had a love for theater from a young age, so when he received a full scholarship from the Juilliard School's drama program, he knew he had to go. So he moved back to New York to start his studies there. And guess who he shared a room with? Robin Williams and Kelsey Grammer. After Kevin graduated in 1978, he went on tour with the acting company John Houseman's Acting Group. They performed A Midsummer Night's Dream, Eastern Standard, and even Hamlet. He then moved to Los Angeles, where he even started acting in soap operas and TV series like Cheers, Tour of Duty, and Murphy Brown. But it was one specific play on Broadway that meant the most to him. Eastern Standard. Kevin played a TV producer secretly living with AIDS, which meant a lot to him considering he was secretly gay at the time, and he'd been attending the funerals of many of his gay friends who had died of AIDS. That's the thing about him. He used whatever was happening in his personal life as fuel to give his best on stage. His life had been a little complicated ever since he was a child because of his alcoholic father. His dad was such a heavy drinker to the point that even Kevin started using alcohol as an escape for a while, but thankfully he stopped before it was too late. I was doing drugs, I was smoking a pack a day and I was having seizures. I, I, I had something called psychomotor epilepsy that started when I was about 14 and I'd have fits and they did all kinds of brain scans and they said you do not have epilepsy but you have a, a psychological condition called long-term anxiety and it comes from growing up in a situation of such anxiety, such tension. Kevin had to face his father's demons from a very young age, which obviously sucked, especially since he used to be the only kid at home stuck with dealing with him. My father was a, he was a fall down drunk and he was a mean drunk and I was there alone. And it was insane in that house. I mean, that day, that oh. day my father was drunk every day and my mother started drinking heavily and I ended up moving out of that house when I was 16. And he eventually lost his father to alcohol, which may have been one of the hardest things to go through back then. This tweet of his shows how happy he was that he stopped drinking before he ended up like his own father. As a teenager and into my 20s, I drank a lot. Having helped my father as he battled alcoholism and then watch him drink himself to death, I knew I had to stop early. I'm very thankful. He channeled all of his pain into his work, and it was his complicated life that gave Kevin the right tools to be Batman. Despite all of his work on screen, it was the voice of one particular superhero that got him all of his fame. We all know and love Batman, right? Well, Kevin Conroy is the voice behind him. In 1991, a scouting director was trying to find the perfect lead actor for Batman the Animated Series. After going through hundreds of auditions, Kevin finally walked in and shocked everyone. The moment he read his lines, they all knew they had found their Batman, and what set him apart from the other people was the fact that he wasn't changing his voice and sounding cartoonish. Kevin just used his real voice, brought it down just a little bit, and got the part. He didn't even have any background in comics or experience as a voice actor, but he still aced it. His Batman voice was dark and husky, and then he switched to a lighter one for his Bruce Wayne. Kevin did a great job at drawing a distinct line between Bruce and Batman, and apparently his inspiration for the different voices came from the movie The Scarlet Pimpernel. His Batman voice was distinct as it seemed to roar from 30 years of 
frustration, confusion, denial, love, yearning, as DC Comics said. And that's how Kevin became Batman in the animated series from 1992 to 1995, and continued his journey as Batman even after the series was over. He was Batman's voice in 15 films, 400 episodes of TV, and many video games. During all of these episodes and movies, he didn't only voice Batman, but Bruce Wayne, Bruce's father Thomas Alan Wayne, and even the evil Batman. Becoming Batman pushed Kevin to come out of his comfort zone and show the world who he truly was. He always knew he was gay, but he knew coming out could ruin his career and chances in the industry. That was until he wrote a short comic for DC where he explained how this job changed his life. I've often marveled at how appropriate it was I should land this role, he wrote. As a gay boy growing up in the 1950s and 60s in a devoutly Catholic family, I'd grown adept at concealing parts of myself. So Kevin came out to the whole world and even found love and got married to Vaughn C. Williams. In the same way, Batman managed to help Kevin speak his own truth. He also helped boost the morale of many people. Kevin told the story of when he was volunteering to cook for firefighters and the police after the 9-11 tragedy. And when one of the people working with him found out Kevin was the one and only Batman, he was excited to tell everyone. One guy in the middle of the night, like three nights into this, he goes, so my day job is I'm an architect. He says, what's your day job? I said, well, I do voices mostly. But I knew it. He said, you're the guy who does Batman. You're that Kevin Conroy. This was the first week after the attack, and obviously the room was filled with sadness. But Kevin still managed to light up their moods a little. Guys, you're not gonna believe who's been cooking your dinners. It's Batman! And then someone else says, make him prove it! So I thought, oh, this is good. So I'm in the back kitchen, and I do from the back kitchen. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman! It's this long pause, and then you hear from the back of the place. Holy f That is Batman! And suddenly people were laughing. And the architect who had recognized me said, uh, what's it feel like to be Santa Claus? Because that's what just happened. Kevin lived his last three decades as a hero through Batman, and now he will forever be remembered as one. And this is how his friends and family are paying tribute to him. DC Comics page was one of the first to pay tribute to their star for over three decades. They wrote about his death on their website, where many of Kevin's co-workers shared how sad they were about his passing. Kevin was a brilliant actor. Mark Hamill, who played Joker across from Kevin's Batman, said, For several generations, he'd been the definitive Batman. It was one of those perfect scenarios where they got the exact right guy for the exact right part, and the world was better for it. He was the ideal partner. It was such a complimentary, creative experience. I couldn't have done it without him. He will always be my Batman. Meanwhile, the producer of Batman, the animated series, Paul Dini, said, Kevin brought a light with him everywhere, whether in the recording booth, giving it his all, or feeding first responders during 9-11, or making sure every fan who ever waited for him had a moment with their Batman. A hero in every sense of the word, irreplaceable, eternal. There isn't one person who could say anything bad about this man. Everyone wrote about what a kind and pure heart Kevin was and the legacy he left behind. The DC fans will miss him just as much too. This Count tweeted, in a world where fandoms rarely see eye to eye, Kevin Conroy was pretty much one of the few things we all agreed on. He was the voice, and he will be missed for a long, long time. Rest in peace, Dark Knight. Kevin's sudden death shocked everyone, but at least he didn't suffer from his cancer for too long. He will always remain the only real voice behind Batman, and rewatching the series will never feel the same again. If you liked this video, make sure to watch this other one.